is Cheryl and Lady coming to you from the Ladies Garden and Home. And today I'm going to be telling you everything I'm going to be doing. Well, not everything. We'd be here forever. Um, in the month of May, here in my Zone 7A backyard garden. For those of you who don't know, um, I live in Southwest Connecticut. We have pretty harsh winters, um, not as dramatic as our friends up north. Um, our lowest temperature is usually about nine degrees. Um, and our average frost date is around April 30th. However, it's been in the 40s mostly at night. In fact, tomorrow night is gonna be the first night. It's gonna be in the 50s. And we're gonna have a stretch of about 10 days of nighttime temperatures in the 50s. Um, so that's something that I keep in mind when I'm planting out my really tender uh, frost sensitive vegetables because they may do okay in 40 degree weather, but they're not gonna thrive. And we want them to, you know, have as much heat excitement as possible. So there are a couple of things that I do um, every week, usually on a Sunday night, what I'll do is I'll write down a list of things that I want to do in the garden that week. And I put it on a yellow sticky pad. Well, this isn't yellow, but you know what I mean, a yellow sticky note. And then when the week is finished, I put it in that week in my, my planner. And then what I can do, and I've done this two years now in a row, is I'll go back and I'll reference last year and what I did in the garden last year. Sorry guys, that sun was blinding me. Anyway, um, I take the uh, sticky notes, I put them in uh, my calendar for the week. Once I've checked off everything that I need to do, I start a new one and then um, write what, starting with what I didn't get accomplished this week and uh, what I'd like to get accomplished the next week. So here, the week of 5-9 through 5-15, plant my herb containers. I actually did that yesterday. Uh, picked up a whole bunch of um, nice herbs at my garden club's annual flower sale. So I planted those up in my containers. I'm gonna direct sow some carrots. And so I did a video on how I uh, plant my carrots and they've started sprouting, they look great except for somebody's dog decided to uh, step inside that bed. And I mean, she didn't dig it up, but she trampled a whole bunch of them. I think I'm gonna uh, save myself a little bit of a headache and I'm going to plant them into grow bags. I'm going to be transplanting tomatoes, my cucumbers, peppers, and eggplants. And I'm going to inside be up potting my squash and my basil. There are still some areas I need to clear from last winter's debris. Underneath the tree, the pine tree that I have growing in the backyard, um, I have a nice spot and it's actually very sunny, uh, especially in the morning. So I'm going to be transplanting my chamomile there. I have another little flower bed that I'm gonna be putting the zinnias and some of the calendula and marigolds in and then, oh, my mint bed. It still looks, it still has all of the last year's growth, brown and ugly looking spurting out of it, but there's a lot of healthy green underneath. So it's starting to come through. So that I got to clean that up as well. So going off of my farmer's almanac uh, calendar, planting calendar here that I showed you in a video uh, oh, back in February or January, I think it was, on how I go about uh, planning the timing of these things. Um, and I'll, I'll link that here. There are plants that like to be direct sown or transplanted. And there are ones that like to go out the beginning of May and ones that like to go out the middle of May. And the middle of May is really just to make sure that the soil temperature and the air temperature are those optimum temperatures that I told you about before. So the vegetables are a pretty long list. I'll try to do this quickly. Beans, and I'm gonna be planting them in a teepee in the middle of my pepper bed because since they are dried beans that I'm talking about, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna need to reach in there and pick them. 
I'm going to just let them dry right where they are. So that includes pinto beans, which um, these actually came from the supermarket in the year that nobody could find seeds. That won't be mentioned. Um, kidney beans. Garbanzo beans. That was my nickname in college. Uh, yeah, Garbanzo. And cannellini beans. So, again, going with my Italian heritage. So those are not. So those are bush beans. That means that they only get about. This one is 22 to 28 inches. So it's a little over two feet. Um, then I've got the climber beans, which I'm going to be sewing against this wall here. I don't know if you would call it a wall. It's basically my deck leading up to my deck. And then the deck's got another couple of feet on top of that. So it gives them a really nice space to crawl. And this year I'm trying red noodle beans. Isn't that a pretty package? Um, I hear a lot of good things about it. These are the pole bean seeds that I saved from last year. And this was kind of a mixture of some white beans, some uh, purple beans, uh, green beans, obviously. But that was kind of fun. And then I have Seychelles. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that. But this is a nice, uh, long, elegant, regular green bean. Um, so those are what I'm sowing bean-wise. A whole bunch of different carrots. I've got not half long. I've got Danvers. I've got a couple of packets of Danvers. I've got these rainbow carrots. I don't have many of these left though, but those were fun. It was a purple, a white, and an orange, all mixed, you know, all different types. And then little finger. I'm kind of um, Going with the quicker varieties, the ones that maybe not grow, don't grow as big, but they don't take quite as long to mature. Sweet corn. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to try corn. Now, corn apparently takes up quite a bit of garden space. And as you know, I don't have that much. But when I finally figured out that I was going to put my lettuce in that green stalk that I showed you... Um, I realize I will be able to dedicate a bed to what is called the three sisters method. And it goes back to Native American, um, oh, hundreds, probably thousands of years, where the American Indians would grow corn, winter squash, and green beans together. And they're called three sisters because the three different plants help each other out. The corn grows first. It gives the pole bean something to wrap around. Um, and the squash provides a nice canopy of mulch uh, or shade at the base. So I'm going to try it. Cucumbers. Now I did start cucumbers inside, but I want a succession. So I started them last month. And I found that once the cucumbers put on a lot of flowers and then put all of their energy in all of that fruiting, they kind of wilt and aren't great performers after that initial flush. So it pays to have a good succession of cucumbers. Then I'm going to plant more dill. Then I'm going to plant more cilantro. Although as we're getting into the warmer season, the cilantro will probably bolt quickly, but that's okay because when I'm planting this cilantro in May, I expect it to be coriander, um, the spice, and let it go to seed and collect the seeds from that. And parsley, although I may not because I have quite a bit of parsley started, but it is such a good companion plant to mix in around the... Um, Mix it around the vegetables. It's like basil that way. Oh, I'm going to be transplanting the basil too. But they're still kind of small because I forgot and I planted them so late. But sometime in May. A little bit more radishes. I did plant a first sowing of radishes back in March. Ooh, so I should have probably put more in. But anyway, the radishes are going to be sporadically placed where I can fit them in. 
Oh, and then sunflowers. I'm doing the, the mammoth. I just decided to direct sow the sunflower because from everything that I've read and I've heard, they do better if they're direct sown and not transplanted. Just like then, I have zinnias that I started in, um, in March inside that I'll transplant, but I'm also going to do another succession of zinnias. So I also have a ton of other flowers that I started inside. Um, one that I'm most excited about is hibiscus. Impatience. I bought uh, calendula. Never grew that before. Uh, chamomile. Uh, I have those two butterfly bushes my mother gave me. Um, oh, I purchased a dahlia plant at the garden sale. Uh, nasturtium and borage both of which are also apparently really good companion plants. So I'm kind of trying to have a plan with my flowers. Beauty is extremely important to me, but so is, you know, practicality. So that's about it. <sighs> that's about it. It's a lot. Yeah. So I'm going to be out here in the garden quite a bit this month. Hopefully the weather will permit. April was not a good month for gardening, and so I got a little bit behind. But, um, you know, it's the kind of, May is the month that you really want to be in the garden every day, getting something accomplished. Okay, I'll be out here with the camera and lady uh, this month, and I will try to shoot as many videos of me explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing and how I do it. Not that I'm the end all and be all, but um, if I'm shooting a video about it, I've generally done the process before and um, had success with it. Otherwise, I wouldn't waste your time. Not that I don't have failures. I, and boy, I've had a lot of failures. I mean, that's the thing about gardening. It really is something that you just have to continuously learn from and not punch yourself or be angry with yourself when things don't work out. You just have to have a kind of attitude like, oh well, I like that plant, but it didn't work. Move on. There's plenty of other things to do. So anyway, those are my ramblings for this evening in the garden. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see some of the videos that I've got coming out in the future, um, please subscribe and hit the alert bell. From the Ladies Garden and Home, enjoy your gardening journey.